Join UF Hall of Famer and 14-year NFL vet Shane Matthews every weekday as he brings you all you need to know about your Florida Gators, including news, analysis, and opinions with some of the biggest names in sports. Find us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcast, or wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. Or watch us live at 8 a.m. on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. Good morning. It's a Thursday edition of Pot Up with Matthews in the morning from the Crime Prevention Security System Studios, large enough to serve you, small enough to care. It's Thursday. We'll have Brent Beard, our college football analyst, join us. Hoping to get Mike right out, talk a little high school sports. We'll see. Um, got in touch with him late, so we got to figure out if that's going to happen or not. If you missed it last night, Gators lose a heartbreaker. Pretty much control the game till last five or six minutes. Lose to Wake Forest. Bad loss. Gators are at four and three now. Uh, your thoughts and your comments on Gator basketball. Uh, Gators lose a few more kids. Go to the portal yesterday. Norman, Shamar James, Caleb Douglas, Max Brown. Not surprised with any of them, quite honestly. So uh, shoot us something on YouTube or Facebook or our Titan MR text line. Let's go to the Titan MR hotline, and we're joined courtesy of Duffield Home Improvements, our college football analyst, Heisman Trophy voter, Brent Beer. Good morning, Brent. How you doing, bud? Shane, it's an amazing time of year, is it not, with what we're trying to keep up with right now uh, between the portal. And by the way, the portal opens Monday, um, so it will be going back and forth. Um, we're getting a trickle now. We'll have a flood on Monday, so we'll, we'll wait for that. we got championship games, a playoffs on Sunday, which should be quite controversial by Sunday afternoon, we think. Uh, and... Um, uh, we've got, um, obviously recruiting, uh, the coaching carousel and so forth, just for our, uh, listeners, a little back, a little insight here, being a Heisman voter, we have until Monday at five o'clock to put our choices in, uh, we will get three choices. Uh, now, the Heisman Trust, and I'll be brief about this, the Heisman Trust um, swears us to secrecy, which I don't agree with because we used to be able to talk about who we voted for the week before the announcement, which brought publicity to the award. Well, we're no longer allowed to do that. I mean, we actually, Shane, we actually have to click on a paragraph that says, that we swear that we will not tell anyone who we voted for until the <laughs> announcement is over. I, I'm serious. That that, that, that that is a part of it. Now, I take it seriously. I've done it for decades now, uh, and, and, am, and am, uh, uh, you know, I enjoy an honor to be able to do it, uh, but that goes along with the voting. So 5 o'clock Monday, it will be in. Uh, they will announce later Monday night who the probably the three to five finalists are. I think we figure out who they are already. But uh, just to give a little bit of uh, uh, insight, that's what's going on with the Heisman vote. Yeah, it's crazy. Uh, I saw somebody put up the stats of uh, comparing Jaden Daniels to uh, Joe Burrow's year. And yes. good gracious, he has surpassed the amount of touchdowns yeah. and total yeah. yards. It's not even close. No, uh, so if he, if he doesn't win it, something's wrong. Um, before we jump into it, we got a couple of uh, comments and questions here. Zach on YouTube brought to you by Quality Plumbing says, Shane, should KJ Jefferson or Cam Rising be contacted for QB next season? Um, I, I, do, I don't think KJ Jefferson would be a good fit here. I, how many years is he going to play? I, I don't understand how he's no. still got eligibility no. left. I know Cam Rising is on his seventh or eighth year. I don't see him le leaving Utah. Uh, and I guess it all depends on if Graham Mertz comes back or not. I think if Graham Mertz comes back, he's your quarterback. Um, Joseph says, Shane, do you know if there's any truth to this? Blue and Orange Gator on Twitter claims to have been an intern for the UA while he attended UF. He posted the following. The UAA um, – where is it right here? Good gracious. Hang on a second. Bear with me, folks. He says, the UAA – turned down Tony Bennett 
and Dan Hurley for Todd Golden and Brian Kelly and Lincoln Riley for Billy Napier. He went on to say, stop letting the cheap ass athletic department convince you we are Iowa State while they're raking top 10 revenue annually. Uh, I have never heard that at all. Uh, and I'm being dead honest. I've never heard any of that, Joseph. Uh, Brent, you may have heard some of that. Um, I will tell you that I don't think our athletic department makes as much money as people think. But on the coaching hires, I don't think either one of those coaches were in the mix for basketball or football. Brian, you got any comments on that? Well, I do, particularly with Lincoln Riley. Look, Riley's a good football coach. He's not a great football coach because he simply will not embrace defensive football. And that has been a real problem for them since he is – everywhere he's gone, uh, they're going to put up great numbers offensively. Uh, but, Shane, right now they can't stop you and me and whoever's in the studio. Uh, that's just the way that it is. And until he grows and matures and realizes you've got to have – you've got to play defense too, he's not going to win anything. So, uh, frankly, I know he gets a lot of attention – and I get all that, but you really have to dig deep and, and really see what has he really done, and and I and hopefully he'll get beyond that. But currently, that's where he is. Uh, Reggie, you're right. My bad. It wasn't Shamar James. Kamari Wilson's what I meant. I get those two guys mixed up. Um, all right, Brent. Let's uh, let's jump into it. Obviously, it's championship weekend. A lot of good games around the country. What are your thoughts? Well, uh, I mean, anything can happen here. Now, uh, people need to be aware we have two Friday night games. Conference USA, <clears throat> New Mexico State, yes, that team that beat Auburn is at Liberty. That's on the CBS Sports Network. And the big game that everybody's looking for, Oregon and Washington. That was a classic in game one uh, that this thing could be 75-70 to 70 before it's over. So <laughs> it's going to be very important. Uh, to go into the, uh, <coughs> excuse me, on, on the, uh, on determine on who is going to the playoffs. Uh, and then we've got a slew of games on, on Saturday that <coughs> we, we simply can't wait for uh, at this point. And anything can happen right now. <laughs> yeah, it really can. Um, Matt wants to know on Facebook Live, Will Rogers to you up? No, people. Y'all so happy that DJ Lagway's coming, and Graham had a hell of a year. Um, yeah, he did. We ain't, quarterback ain't the problem with this football team. <laughs> no, no. Uh, Andy's question for you, Brand, on Facebook Live, brought to you by Metal Law. Does Georgia need to win to get in the playoffs, and will Texas win over Bama impact the committee? Well, uh, it depends on how much the committee values had is the – reality for that <laughs> if georgia loses you would think they would get in but the problem right now is uh just the fact of <laughs> if they lose there's so many other variables that they actually may not get in that's amazing to me uh with what they have done but we've just got a year to where we may have several unbeatens and if we do, um, Georgia may not get in. Um, you know, do they deserve to get in? Yeah. They deserve to be in right now. But <laughs> with the year that we've got and not knowing what the committee is going to do, frankly, at this point, we just don't know. So, yes, there is a chance that if Georgia loses in that Alabama, they won't get in. And here's the other thing that, that that's amazing there is also a chance, believe it or not, I don't think this will happen, but it's certainly being floated out there that if Florida State beats Louisville, which a lot of people think they will not, and Florida State's an undefeated uh, ACC champion, that they won't get in. So uh, the, the scenarios are, are endless right now. Yeah, so the committee – Committee needs to just well, – they got to pull for Louisville to win. I, I do think Louisville's going to win the game. Um, yeah, I think a lot they're of people pretty good. Uh, <clears throat> text on the Titan of our text line. It says, QB, need some big coaching hires that will make a difference soon. Charlie Pat Partridge, D-line, has done a great job at Pitt. Update, update. With the loss of Caleb Douglas, this puts Billy's first class at 
210.55, good for 33rd best class. I didn't think Caleb Douglas was a Billy Napier uh, recruit. I want to say that was a uh, Dan Mullen, but I don't know how any of that recruiting stuff happened. Uh, rankings go anyway. Um, all right, let's see if we got any other ticks here. No, we'll just move on here. Uh, well, well <clears throat> let me say real quick, 24-7, Florida is six. That's where they are right now. Yeah, they're talking about – so what a lot of the fans do now, Brent, is when, when a kid leaves a program, right? they go back and calculate whatever class he came in and say, well, now since that guy left, that class went from 10th to 33rd or something along those lines. Yeah, um, yeah. But I think Caleb Douglas – somebody correct me if I'm wrong. I want to say he came – he was here with Dan Mullen. Um, Brent, so – uh, I want to say in the past on this Friday night, we've had – didn't we used to have two games in uh, like the – wasn't the Big Ten and the the Pac-12 Pac games on Friday night? Am I, I don't am know I, the Big Ten. I, I, the, you're right on the Pac-12. The Pac-12 has played a lot of theirs on Friday night. I remember last year Utah and USC being on Friday night. I'm not – I don't – I'd have to look back. I'm not sure the Big Ten has, but it is a good spot to have these games um, because you can get you can get in early. Now you can also because of the Saturday games, people sometimes people vote on uh, on, on what they saw last, and that can make a difference because you've got Florida State and Iowa that they were playing the last two games. Saturday night, Alabama Georgia is at four o'clock, so so it's in there too, and then you've got Oklahoma and Texas at at noon, so it, it spread across uh, the way start, starting for Friday night at seven o'clock. All right, Michael says we do not need another QB at this time. Shane, check on Kamari's status. Last night, High Top Sports reported last night that Kamari's dad told him no and pulled his name out of the portal. All right, I. Like I said, I don't follow recruiting. I get the recruiting updates just like y'all do on Twitter. And um, so anyway, uh, Brent, what what do you think about this uh, Washington-Oregon game? How do you see this thing playing out? You know, everybody loves Oregon. I get it. Yeah. But yeah. Oregon has, out of all the people that are in the mix, have the, the weakest conference schedule, supposedly, or weakest strength of schedule. Um, what do you see happening in this game? Well, uh, I won't be surprised, though, to see Oregon win. I mean, Bo Nix is playing really well right now. And the thing with Washington has been, frankly, over the last several games, Washington's nearly been upset uh, several times. As a matter of fact, they almost were last weekend. Uh, but to their credit, uh, they were able to uh, – uh, to win the game. So I would probably go with Oregon because they're, they are the hotter team. But again, the, the reality is, you know, it's Shane, as you know, how a team plays the previous week often has, uh, no, uh, difference on how they play the following week, uh, because they can be totally different team, uh, from that time. Now, here's the strength of schedule that I've got, and, and, and Lord, there's so many of these things out there right now, but Texas is the toughest schedule. Bama is second. Um, uh, and uh, Oregon has the 52nd toughest schedule um, in the group, and Florida State has the 66th toughest schedule uh, of all the teams involved here. So take that for what it's worth. And there's, I mean, these teams can't do anything about that, uh, but that does probably give you an indication of uh, of how battle tested they've been. Yes, no doubt about it. Uh, a lot of people going into the portal. Obviously, it opens up on Monday for real. Uh, did you see the comments that uh, the Nebraska coach mentioned, Matt Rule? Matt Rule. <clears throat> yeah, and I'll quote this. Um, this is sobering. Uh, he said a good quarterback in the portal cost a million to a million and a half to two million right now 
there are some teams that have six million or seven million dollar players playing for them. So that if someone asks him what the going rate is for quarterbacks in the transfer portal, and that was his answer. <laughs> That's crazy. Uh, 1966 is, HBC beers available at Spurrier's Gridiron Grill, Gator Games in the Swamp, and select retail outlets. Crisp American Lager. That's 1966 HBC beer. Speaking with Brent Beard here on the Titan and More Hotline, courtesy of Duffield Home Improvements. Uh, Utah had backup quarterback Nate Johnson's transferring as well, going into the portal. Brent, I think we've talked about this every year. And and I don't know if anybody did their homework, and I, I'm surely not going to do it. But I'm so curious at how many guys have gone into the portal that get stuck in the portal and don't ever right, play football again. Right. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> That's a higher percentage than we ever want to admit. That's the yeah. – that's the sad thing about this. And see, a lot of the people going to the portal are like redshirt freshmen or freshmen, and they really don't have any equity to go along with it, uh, and that's a problem. Now, here's one thing that will help uh, now because Nate Johnson has three years of eligibility. Now, my understanding is this is the last year that these players can use the COVID. Um, it, you know, everybody basically got a free year because of COVID. Well, my understanding is this is the last year you can do that. So that so after this year, uh, that you'll you'll see players that will that will have fewer years than they do obviously now. Uh, but just keep that in mind too. Yeah, I got a feeling Nate Johnson ain't going to be signing with anybody personally. Nate I don't God. know if he can yeah. play Power 5 football at the quarterback position. Um, we had a question here. Brent, your thoughts on Mike Elko to A&M, and do you think Riley Leonard will go with him? Well, Riley Leonard, the Duke quarterback, is uh, open for uh, – he's transferring. Uh, that, that's a good question. Uh, well, he might – uh, we don't know anything definitive on that right now, but Riley Leonard, who obviously got hurt at the end of the year for Duke, is a very good quarterback uh, too. Uh, I like I like the Elko hire. Um, he's pretty reserved. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, he's very organized. He's very disciplined. I talked to a former Florida State player who was at the Florida State Duke game, and his comment was. He was, he was amazed how disciplined Duke was. And that does make a big difference in, in a football game, too. By the way, former LSU and A&M quarterback Max Johnson has committed to North Carolina. So that's his third school. Max Johnson, obviously, is a good quarterback, uh, too. And by the way, Shane, if people haven't heard this, um, uh, my understanding is, uh, Tyler Van Dyke is transferring from Miami. He really struggled at the end of the season, so hopefully he will get a fresh start with somebody. Yeah. Take him our text line. Paul and Tyler Ash says, good morning, Shane. I'm trying to kick the soda addiction. What is your mix in your water bottles you drinking every morning? <laughs> trying to shed some pounds. Uh, well, first of all, I'm a big I, – I do like my Coke Zero. So if you like Coke, just gradually – Start drinking Coke Zero, and you'll you'll be addicted to Coke Zero, and you're good there. Uh, I have the Celsius uh, mix that I put with the water, and uh, it's kind of my coffee. I don't drink coffee, so that's kind of my my deal. So that's your nutritional update on the program today. Um, Urban, this is a text here on the Titan More text line that said, Urban on a show day before yesterday said, quote, as a head coach, you don't get to coach that much. Too many other things to do do billy needs help uh that's true but i agree there are a bunch of coach head coaches that do a lot of stuff so yeah. um anyway all right brent there's a lot of openings out there uh for co head coaching jobs what which ones do, are very intriguing to you well as usual we have the coaching carousel that's going on this time of year uh that that is very interesting um, now, some of these are slowly getting filled. 
but and we've got a kind of a domino effect uh, that that is going on too. Um, let, let's see. I mean, we've got. I mean, um, Duke we thought was not much of a job, but the reality is Mike Elko made it a much better job. Uh, Houston, obviously with Holgerson, um, man, that's a incredible place as far as how big it is and the people who are in that area. Also, I was a little bit surprised at Middle Tennessee that they fired Rick Stockstill, mm-hmm. but to be honest with you. And uh, Tara Bowden uh, was fired from UL Monroe. People may have missed that one um, also. Uh, so Jeff Lebby, I'm curious if you know him and what you thought of that one too uh, also. So, I mean, with the jobs that are open right now, I mean – Fran Brown of Georgia, the the DB coach, just went to Syracuse, if people haven't heard that. I would say for for the moment, maybe two of the better jobs, Duke and Houston, uh, are out there. Indiana to Tom Allen did a good job there, but but he's no longer there too. So, but we will. I'm pretty sure that um, the James Madison coach is going to be the next coach at Indiana, I think. Yeah, that very well could happen. Good point. Randy, this little note you got here about the head coaching tenure, about yeah. the read, – read that. That's amazing. Yeah. Just, thir- just 30 of 133 Division I programs have employed the same head coach for more than five years. Out of those 30, 11 have won 50% or fewer. Out of the remaining 17 – 11 have won 60% or better, and 11 have won 33. Uh, um, uh, so, I mean, Shane, what, what in the world does that tell you about being a head coach and how difficult of a job that is if 30 out of 133 uh, uh, have been there for more than five years? Yeah. Uh, on YouTube, brought to you by Quality Plumbing, Christopher says, Shane, we need to contact Charlie Partridge at Pitt for the D-line coach. I thought we hired him. Did we not hire him? I'm not sure. I've heard, him, somebody... I've heard him in the mix, but I haven't, oh, I, I I haven't, haven't heard official. that official. Okay. Yeah, I've been too busy to follow anything. All right, we have a million texts and questions about, Brent, have you heard anything about ETN going into the portal? No, I haven't. Uh I hope he stays. I think he's an incredible talent. And if he would have stayed healthy uh, in the FSU game in the second half, he would have made a real difference. So here, here's the thing, is, is I've heard nothing. Would it surprise me if he goes in the portal? Absolutely not. Because remember, people, this is all about money. It is. That's it has right. nothing to do about any loyalty that no. I signed a contract no. or I signed a, uh, a letter of intent to go to this university. Right. It's right. all about – and it. Look, ETN knows he's a good player. Everybody in America knows he's a good player. So he can say, he can tell our people, I'm going to the portal to try to get more money from us. And and that right. could possibly be happen where we come with a new contract or whatever they call these agreements. Yeah. And now he gets the money that he thinks he's he's worthy of. Or he just goes in there and see who's the highest bidder is and go plays for them. So mm-hmm. it it's freaking nuts now. I don't know how else to put it. It's nuts. All right, Brent, uh, the, I think the 2024 schedules have come out. I don't know if every, like, date's come out yet or not. No, no, um, no. That, I mean, we know some, but we, we, but we don't know everything yet. Yeah, well, I did see Ole Miss and Mississippi State are still going to be on Thanksgiving night, right? That, yeah, that, that, that's mine. Yes, the egg bowl between Mississippi State and Ole Miss – remains on Thanksgiving weekend, yes. Okay, so that would mean next year that the rivalry games are going to be that weekend as well, right? Uh, well, we will know that for sure. Now, the SEC is supposed to come out with the schedule uh, at the 1st of December. So I'm guessing now December's tomorrow. Uh, so they probably are going to do that next week. Uh, and they will be smart to do that. Now, what Shane uh, is saying here is something that's important 
because we have heard that there is a possibility that the rivalry games are either going to stay on Thanksgiving weekend or they may back them up a week. Now, what I've also heard this week, and I really hope this happens, is that every team may get not one but two buys. In other words, they may get two off weekends. And I, and and if you're going to expand the playoff and you're going to expand the, uh, uh, the uh, you know, if you're going to start the season, which we understand the the uh, last Saturday in August, they deserve uh, another weekend off. So hopefully that will happen. But yes, some of the schedule was leaked this week by Chris Lowe of ESPN, and uh, and I'll say this real quick. Bam and Georgia are going to play on September the 28th in uh, Tuscaloosa. That, that's one of the games that we know about. Texas and Texas A&M, we thought might open the season, but we think from that report they're going to play on Saturday, November the 30th. So that's something to keep in mind, too. LSU and A&M is going to be on October the 26th. I won't go into all this because of the time. But now, here's what's a little, something a little bit different, too. Um, and this is how the schedule is going to change with Oklahoma and Texas coming in. Imagine this, Shane. Alabama, before they play Auburn, this year played Chattanooga. Next year, Alabama, before they play Auburn and Tuscaloosa, goes to Oklahoma. It's quite a difference, isn't it? No doubt about it. No doubt about it. Um, Brent, somebody just sent a text on the Titan More text line. says that they heard that UCLA fired Chip Kelly but couldn't find another coach, so they rehired him. <laughs> Do you know if that's true or not? <laughs> uh, I, I mean, look, <clears throat> something like that could have happened behind the scenes, but there's nothing about that that, that we have heard. Uh, I mean, look, if something like that would have happened uh, – it would have been all over Twitter, uh, but yeah, there's still some things going that went, that we will never know about. But but no, I haven't heard that. But I have heard that uh, that there was a chance that they may make a change, but there's nothing official with that yet. No. All right, real quick, Brent. Let's talk about the Florida. I mean, the Florida Georgia, the Georgia Alabama game uh, Saturday. Uh, Georgia is. Did I dream this, or is this has Georgia gone three straight years in regular season going twelve and zero? Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, they're twenty. Okay. They're they're on a twenty nine game winning streak right now. Yeah. Um, all right. So, obviously, Georgia uh, has played really well. Carson Beck's had a great year. They protected him extremely well. Bama's yeah. got a pretty pretty salty defense. Um, can Georgia move the football on them? Well, Auburn certainly did, but I think Alabama will play much better defensively than they did against Auburn. Auburn had a lot of eye candy. They had a lot of movement that uh, that I thought was similar to what Gus Malzahn used to do at Auburn, uh, and that took Alabama by surprise. I think Georgia will be more conventional. Look, look as good as Georgia is, Georgia does have to do a lot of motion. I mean, it's tough enough to beat them. Uh, when they just play a conventional ball game. But what's helping Georgia right now is they're getting healthier, uh, at least in some ways. Kendall Milton is back. He's one of their better running backs. He's been hurt all year. Dejon Edwards is too. Jamon Dumas Johnson, their linebacker, broke a bone in his forearm. We thought he was out for the year. Now he's week to week and might play. So, I mean, it's amazing. Uh, what we can do now with technology and medicine, Julian Humphrey as your shoulder, he may play. Uh, so now they are losing Fran Brown, their DB coach, but that's not going to be any big deal. Uh, they've got a player transferring Darius Smith. That's no big deal either. They'll just simply replace him. The problem they have got, and this also came up in the Georgia Tech game, and I, I'm curious what you think about this. They they have a tendency to start very slow, and mm-hmm. they'll get behind seven nothing, fourteen nothing, and then they'll adjust and and they'll get back in the game and they'll overtake everybody. But my question is, Shane, if you have a tendency to do that, 
at some point, either in the championship game with Alabama or in the playoffs, does that come back to haunt Georgia at some point? Yeah, it definitely could. But I, I, I don't want to say I feel like they get bored. But uh, I think, you know, and I've well, said this – I've said this multiple times. There's no better atmosphere than the SEC championship game in all That's the sports. That's true. I agree and with that. They will be ready to play. Uh, yeah. I firmly believe that. They got so much on the line. Radwar is a family-owned business that prides itself in excellent customer service while providing quality and affordable promotional products and customized apparel. A few more minutes with Brent Beard. Uh, there was one question here. Let me see if I can find it real quick. Uh Greg wants to know, do you think the rumor that Texas A&M hired Stoops and then unhired him after a fan revolt? Well, there's some truth to that. Uh, and if you remember Greg Schiano with Tennessee, uh, when the Tennessee fans revolted uh, in that situation, he took his name out. I think what happened there is they threw up a trial balloon for lack of a better word, just to see how the how that would be accepted, and uh, um, when the fans did not like it, uh, they probably thought that uh, they better stay there. Now, look, Stoops is not hurting. Stoops is making nine million dollars a year, but I but I also think Mark Stoops is a very good football coach. So the question to me was in that situation, okay, do you want to do you want to hire Mike Elko? who has had a very short tenure as a head coach, or do you want to hire Mark Stoops, uh, who has been a head coach for double-digit years? So um, I, I don't know if the Kentucky thing got him or what it was. Uh, and, look, I think Elko's fine. Stoops is fine by staying. And, but I do think he'll probably move on at some point. Uh, but, uh, but, no, with that, there, there is very much something to that as far as how those fans and the board of directors uh, acted toward uh, the possibility of getting Stoops in there. All right, we got a couple more texts here. I want to questions for you, Brent, on the Titan MR text line. Uh, this is from Larry. He says, Brent, your thoughts on Bobby Petrino going back to Arkansas. Were you surprised? Uh, yes, uh, but they love him there. Uh, and look, I, I give Petrino credit. Uh, people gave, gave him high marks for what he did at A&M. Now, Jimbo handcuffed him, is what we understand now, and, and, and put some limitations on him. He won't have that in Arkansas. Obviously, he was there before. We know all about the, the motorcycle incident. And to his credit, Petrino has grown up some, and he actually went back, people can Google this, to the Arkansas Little Rock uh, Touchdown Club, and actually apologize for his behavior. That that was an interesting uh, clip to watch. Uh, so I think he'll do fine. And, uh, I mean, Shane, uh, he, he, look, Petrino may not be a guy you want to have lunch with, but as far as calling <laughs> plays and offensively, he does a good job, doesn't he? He's very, he's very good. He's very good. And Jeff Rom comes from his tree. Uh, so that's why I'm a big Louisville guy. Um, all right, the fourth and thirty-one, Brent. You're you're an Alabama guy, but you have a lot of Auburn friends. Uh, is that the biggest play in the history of Alabama? It's one of them. It's one of the more iconic plays. I don't think there's any doubt about that. And and see, the plays become iconic and stuck in our memory because of what is at stake. And, I mean, you're down to four, fourth and 31. And, I mean, you've seen the play, and you can tell us how hard it is to do that. But he hit Bond in the corner of the end zone. And there couldn't have – Shane, there couldn't have been six inches to a foot uh, before his foot was on the white line. But he caught it in bounds, caught it with his hands. So, uh, I mean – Certainly one of the bigger plays, uh, and people forget this, was in the Sugar Bowl when Alabama held Penn State at the goal line, uh, and they won the game 14-7 to and ended up winning the national championship. Uh, so people relate plays to what they mean. Uh, but that, you know, with it being the rivalry against Auburn, with it being uh, going into the 
uh, to the Georgia SEC championship game with everything on the line, uh, that's a play that will be remembered for a uh, a long, long time. And it's it's also probably interesting, Shane, that it was also the tenth anniversary on that day of kick six. So uh, in some in some ways, that was Alabama's kick six. Does that make sense? Yeah. Oh, there's yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, we got another text here on the Titan or text. And I touched on it earlier, but they want to get your thoughts, Brent. It's Bob. He says, why would KJ Jefferson want to go into the portal after all the years at Arkansas? Well, that's a good question. I, I mean, there's a lot of things we may not know. Um, uh, look, probably one of the things going on here and Shane touched on this earlier is he also wants to see how much money he can get. Uh, and, and look, this stuff's legal now. I get it for what they're doing, but I think probably also what's happening is uh, he probably thinks he can get a better offensive line somewhere else <laughs> and he can stay healthier. Uh, but number two, uh, in right chain, uh, I, and I, I'm serious about this, I think that's part of what's going on. Uh, he's going to see if, uh, if who's interested, how much money they're offering, and would Arkansas match that or go beyond it? It, it? Is that possible? Yeah, it could be. It could be for sure. Um, yeah, I just don't know. He's been beat up, too. I just don't know how many teams yeah, are going to be agree. seeking after him. <clears throat> All right, Alan on Facebook Live brought to you by Mellon Law says, has there ever been a program like Georgia that has gone undefeated three seasons in a row in the last 75 years in the SEC? Assuming winning 36 regular season games in a row is very rare. Has there ever been a journalist who's asked the question, quote, how do y'all do it? Do we have any (laughs) answers? For instance, what is Georgia's total NIL payout annually? How does it compare to other type like programs? Well, I mean, they're up there. Yeah, I mean, but nobody – There's. it's not like you can pull up and see what every player is making. Right, right. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I agree. I mean, mean, one day that might be – we may have that kind of transparency – but we're not going to have that right now. I mean, I've I've seen some Twitter situations of estimates, but who knows uh, what that means. And uh, I, I think my other thing with that is, I mean, I'm sure there's ways you can find that, and probably during the off season, when when these guys have more time, some of these investigative journalists will probably do that. And I and but but you know the reality is. Is that public or private information? That's another thing. I'm not an accountant, so I, I you know, I don't know with that. Uh, but um, I mean, the the Minnesota <clears throat> Minnesota won the national championship three years in a row, but that was back in the th- 1930s, and frankly, the criteria was different during that time. So what Georgia is attempting to do frankly, may never be done again. Uh, that, that's how rare that is. Uh, I mean, to win that many games in a row and for them to win three in a row uh, would be unprecedented and would put – and frankly, would put Kirby in a class uh, that we really have never seen before. Yeah, that's what scares me. Um, Brent, great stuff as always. You got any nuggets you want to give us before you get out of here? Oh, Lord, I, uh, listen, I could be here the rest of the day with nuggets, uh, to be <laughs> honest with you, uh, that there is uh, there's so much stuff going on. Now, Auburn is involved uh, with a lot of these quarterbacks uh, who are still looking around. I mean, anybody, any, any of the major quarterbacks uh, are going to be involved with that uh, as far as Auburn is concerned. And, look, they'll get a quarterback, uh, and they'll be okay. I don't have any doubt about that uh, with what Hugh Freeze is able to do. Uh, Ray Davis is going to the NFL, by the way. Folks may have missed that. I'll just hit on some things uh, real quick. Uh, Again, uh, I I still say that, uh, and our Heisman votes will be in Monday, but Jaden Daniels will be the favorite. I don't think that's any secret for anybody we didn't really touch on jeff levy very much but he is well one of the things i've never seen before <laughs> mississippi state fans did, did you see the clip shane of that 
they put the athletic director on their shoulders and paraded him around the airport. Uh, that they were so happy that, that Jeff Levy was there. Uh, let's see how let's see how happy they will be. Now, Will Rogers is another guy. I understand that's probably going to hit the portal. The Mississippi State quarterback, who is close to setting about every record you can set, <coughs> as far as the uh, <laughs> the SEC is concerned. So, and I could do a lot more. Uh, but in the interest of time, uh, I'll, we'll go with that. But, but yeah, there, man, there's just something happening every minute. It's just absolutely unbelievable. Oh, and, and uh, Max Johnson, uh, I believe we said this earlier, uh, the former A&M quarterback uh, is ended up uh, at North Carolina. So Drake May is leaving, and they will have Max Johnson that – that's not bad for quarterbacks, is it, Shane? So, so, so this would be Max's third year. Third, how, yeah. how is he already? How's he already committed to to North Carolina when the portal just ain't even really officially open? Well, that that's kind of what it, on three is reporting that. Uh, I, you're I you're right. I get I get that. I get your point. I really do. Uh, but what they're saying is it will probably be a, obviously it will be official on Monday. Uh, when they do that, but I think what they've got is uh, they, you know, that that's where he's going, and they've probably already worked out some kind of deal that will be official, official then. And he's got he's got two years of eligibility remaining, also. And, and by the way, for Miami, Corey Flag, Donald Cheney, um, uh, and Jafari Harvey along with Tyler Van Dyke, are going into the portal uh, also. So, it, and Riley Leonard obviously is in the portal. Shane, isn't it amazing that there's so much stuff going on that we barely had time to even mention the Florida State-Louisville ACC title game, and it's one of the bigger games of the weekend? Yeah, way too much stuff. Grant, Brent, have a great weekend. We'll talk to you next week, bud. Thanks, brother. Take care. That's Brent Beard, our college football analyst, Heisman Trophy voter. Join us on the Titan More Highline, courtesy of Duffield Home Improvements. Take a quick time out, come back. I got a bunch of questions, texts, and stuff I got to get to. You're watching and listening to Pot Up Matthews in the morning. We want to take this moment to thank our sponsors who keep the show going and pay the bills. Our premium sponsors are Crime Prevention Security Systems, large enough to serve you, small enough to care. Titan MRI, Gainesville's only locally owned and operated MRI facility. Meldon Law, the only official injury and accident law attorneys of the Florida Gators. Peachland Dental, Gator Nation's first choice for dentistry in Port Charlotte. QC Kinetics, live pain-free with QC Kinetics. Campus USA, put some star power to work in your financial life with Campus USA Credit Union. Dave & Buster's, eat, drink, play, watch. Duffield Home Improvements for your window, siding, and roofing needs. Radware, your local provider of promotional products, uniforms, and apparel. Our gridiron sponsors are Auto ER, UF Bookstores, Silverback Concrete, Ruse Ogre State Farm Insurance, Radware, F45, Quality Plumbing. Our touchdown sponsors are Adams Ribs, Gator Dominoes, Celebrate Primary Care, Gator Bait Media, Okito America, Style Cuts, Ironwood Golf Course, Big Mills Cheese Steak, McDonald's of Gainesville, 84 Lumber, Dowling Signs, Baker's Sporting Goods, Silver Q Billiards, and Sports Bar. If you're interested in promoting your business on the show, call Freddie at 352-284-3733. If you like what we're doing here, make sure to follow us and support the businesses that support us. The Kiera Grace Foundation proudly presents An Evening with Tim Tebow, Thursday, November 30th at the Touchdown Terrace at Ben Hill Griffin Stadium. Experience a once-in-a-lifetime VIP meet and greet with Tim. Hear his heartfelt stories and his unyielding dedication to the most vulnerable. With your support, we can extend the reach of the Kiera Grace Foundation to save precious lives in Latin America. Get your ticket before they sell out. Don't miss your chance to meet Tim Tebow, be inspired, and make a tangible difference. Welcome back to the Crime Prevention Security System Studios, large enough to serve you, small enough to care. Silverback Concrete's a family-led team of heavy concrete specialists that build commercial structures with unrivaled quality. Silverback Concrete, you stand on it, 
we stand by it. On YouTube, brought to you by Quality Plumbing. Uh, Robert says, Shane, do you think the NIL, the transfer portal on all the tampering is running college football? I honestly think it is. I agree 1,000%. That's what I said when NIL hit. I did not like it. People criticized me because they were, they were saying I was jealous because I didn't get paid. Uh, that had nothing to do with it. Um, if NIL was what it was supposed to be from jersey sales, name, image, and likeness, so autographs, getting car deals, things of that nature, fine. But just flat out, what it is is it's buying players and playing for the highest bidder. Um, and I just don't like it for college athletics. Um you do that in professional sports, but they have rules and regulations. There are no rules and regulations in this. Zero. Zero. And you're going to see players put their names in the portal. Uh, they're probably already negotiating with other schools to see what each school is willing to pay them. And then they're going to go to probably to the highest bidder. And um, it's a shame. I absolutely hate it, but there's nothing we can do about it, folks. And so when our when some of our good players leave, I don't know if they will or not, unless we match or give more money, don't get upset. Get upset with the system. Michael says the system will implode in time if an entity does not gain control over NIL. When these young people have millions thrown at them and some have not even attended a class, ordinary pe work, people working hard each day will become totally – uh, turned off to college football. Yeah, it's uh, it's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. I mean, just think about these kids that have played at multiple schools. You know, if you graduate, you can go into the portal. Uh, we had a couple people say Max Johnson is a graduate, so that's why he can transfer right away. I, I didn't realize he already graduated. But uh, be his third school in three years, I think, if I'm not mistaken. That's crazy. This day in sports is brought to you by Campus USA Credit Union. Put some star power to work in your financial life with Campus USA Credit Union. All right, where is it? This day in sports, a lot of our listeners will remember this. In 1993, the National Football League announces its 30th franchise, the Jacksonville Jaguars. They're having a heck of a year. Good football team. Uh, Reggie says, not only the players that gain millions, but the players that try to transfer and never play another down again. Bingo. Tons of them. Tons of them are going to that portal. And the sad thing is, they're losing their free college education. There's tons of them that go in there and don't ever get out. They end up just having to go into the real world. Um Rodney says Florida's looking at three losing seasons and Georgia hasn't lost a game in three years. Hint, the UA needs a gap analyst. <laughs> yeah, that's what I said. That, that team up there in Athens, it's a scary, scary thing right now. Scary, scary, scary. All right, text on the Titan text line from Willie. Willie wants to know, Shane, what are your thoughts on Max Brown transferring? Were you surprised? No, I was not. Um, Max is a great kid. I don't know if he can play power five QB. We'll see if anybody wants him. Uh, you know, I want to say it, it was between us and central Michigan, uh, the two offers that he had, maybe central Michigan, uh, maybe Jim McElwain needs a quarterback there. Um, I think he's from the Oklahoma, Tulsa, Oklahoma area, maybe Tulsa. I don't know. So, um, but it's probably the best move for him. Wish him the best. Good kid. Uh, a lot of people here want to hire on YouTube, want to hire Charlie Strong. Uh, Charlie was a good defensive coordinator under Urban when you had a bunch of NFL guys. Ruse Ogre State Farm is the office of team, is a team of dedicated insurance professionals ready to help life go right with the right insurance options for you and your family. Visit ogreinsurance.com. Give them a call at 352-240-1779. Andy just asked, does Austin Armstrong have enough experience to get his guys on his staff, or will Billy have all the say? Uh, probably both. Um, I don't know who his guys would be. I'm a little surprised we haven't gotten rid of any other coaches at this point. I don't know 
when or if that's coming. Joseph asked a question on Facebook Live brought to you by Mellon Law. Did I see the Miami tight end playing his ninth year of college football? Yeah, that's crazy. He's He's been there almost a decade. Think about that. Uh, I want to say the quarterback at UT San Antonio, I think he was in his about his eighth or ninth year this year. Uh, that's just – that's crazy. Absolutely nuts. Be kind of cool. Sean on YouTube brought – this is Facebook Live brought to you by Mel Law. What's the biggest need in my opinion? D-line depth or offensive line? Cool. I say in no particular order, O-line, D-line, linebackers. O-line, D-line, linebackers. It's been not great for about seven years now. Got to find some war daddies. Got to. Got to, got to. Michael says, I pray Bubba Spurrier will have the opportunity to be a head coach somewhere this year. Uh, he, he interviewed for the Duke job the you know, when they gave it to Elko. Maybe he'll get another opportunity at Duke. It's his alma mater. Uh, I would love to see that as well. it will be anxious to see if uh, Jed Fish stays at Arizona. He has Gator ties as well. Uh, Jed's done a phenomenal job with the Arizona Wildcats. And uh, um, we'll see. Joseph said, Billy keeps both O-line coaches. He will lose the fan base even more. Yeah, you're probably right on that, man. People are uh, wondering what's happening there. Toby says, Phil Parker will be good as a co-DC. He's up for – I don't know why Phil Parker – he has been at Iowa now – 12 years, I believe, is their D.C. And I get it, people. Some of the offenses they play are just horrible. But regardless, in today's football, every rule favors the offense. And they somehow play great defense every year. I don't know why another major – now, look, they're 10-2. and two. They're a Power 5 Big Ten school. But why somebody else has not anted up and given Phil Parker – a lot of money to be their DC. Uh, 941 Low Lifes on YouTube brought to you by Quality Plumber says being buddies in the coaching business will get you can. Not true. Not true. Uh, that's what it all is. It's, it's buddies and relationships. And it's that's on every every staff around pretty much. You only get can when you lose. <laughs> uh, thunderclap. Shane, I think we should throw the money on the table and bring back the Gator great trout wine to coach the OL. Yeah, I mean, he may not want to come back. Somebody said he's from up that way and likes uh, Penn State. So, I mean, sometimes, you know, whatever's best for him and his family, uh, go from there. Andy, last question. We're getting out of here. I was hoping to get Mike right out on, but we'll get him next week when the state championship games are played. He says, do you think Billy will be at Buholtz Lakeland game on Friday night? I have no idea. Uh, you know, Buholtz has two Gator commits. I don't, I'm sure Lakeland, I'm sure there's some guys we we're looking at there. Great program for sure. Um, but I have no idea. And then uh, JB says, maybe Spurry can put in good work for Kerwin at Duke. Uh, I mean, Coach Spurrier is trying to get his son hired, and that ain't worked. So I don't know if they're going to hire Kerwin. So hope you enjoyed today's program. Uh, tough, tough loss for the Gator basketball team last night. And uh, we appreciate you chiming in today with all your texts, comments, and questions. I want to thank Brent Beer for joining us on the Titan Number Hotline, courtesy of Duff Hill Home Improvements. Have a great day, folks. We'll see you tomorrow.